Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to focus on three verbs that create confusion because they're all used to talk about the ability of doing something. So obviously, if three verbs can be used to talk about basically the same thing, it's natural to be confused, right? So with this video, I'm gonna show you all the different shades of using sapere, potere, and riuscire a. As always, you can find all of this beautifully written out on my blog page at italianlanguagehub.com. If you need it in PDF format, just click on the link below and you can download it for free. Okay, let's focus on these verbs. Let's start with the verb potere. Potere can be translated with the English verb can. Potere is a modal verb and it's a verb that talks about the ability of being able or not being able of doing something that does not depend from us. For example, look at the sentence. Non posso guidare la macchina perché mi sono dimenticata le chiavi a casa. I can't drive the car because I forgot the keys at home. In this case, you can't do something, not because you're not able to, but simply because you don't have the keys. So if you don't have the keys, you can't do that activity. So it doesn't depend from me. It depends from the fact that I don't have my keys with me. Another example. Non posso venire alla festa perché ho la febbre. Once again, you're saying, I can't come to the party because I have a fever. So the fact that you're not going to the party depends on an external factor. In this case, being sick. Let's look at another example. Posso venire da te alle 17. Non prima perché ho lezione. Once again, this person saying, I can come to your house at five, but not earlier because I have a lesson. So the fact that this person is able to do something doesn't depend directly on her or on him, but it depends on an external factor. In this case, having a lesson. Moving on to the next verb, you have the verb sapere. Sapere is very interesting because you are using it once again to say that you can, you are able to do something. But in this case, it's usually linked to the idea that you have learned how to do something. This is why you're going to use the verb sapere when you're talking about being able to play an instrument. If you can play an instrument, you have learned how to play. Since it's linked to having learned how to do something, you can use the verb sapere. So you can say, so suonare la chitarra. I can play the guitar. Meaning, I have learned, so now, I can, I'm able to play the guitar. So cantare. I can sing. Once again, usually it's linked to having learned how to sing. Okay, so it's usually very closely linked to something that you have studied for or you have learned how to do and you are now able to do it. Let's look at some other examples. Laura sa guidare la macchina? In this case, you have a question. Is Laura able to drive the car? So can she drive the car? Driving the car is something that you learn to do. Okay, so once again, it's linked with something that you have learned. Non so nuotare. I can't swim meaning I don't know how, I have never learned how. Or, 
sai cucinare gli gnocchi? Can you cook gnocchi? Meaning, have you learned? Are you able? Can you do it? Okay, I know I'm stressing the concept a little bit more because I want to make sure that you understand that sapere is usually linked with something that you can learn. Okay, so sorry if I'm being a bit too <laughs> insistent on that. The last verb that I want to show you and I want to compare is riuscire a. The first thing that you need to take into consideration, remember, highlight, read it out 150 times until you remember it, is that you're going to use the preposition a. Riuscire a. Repeat it with me. Riuscire a. Riuscire a. Riuscire a. The formula that you absolutely need to remember is riuscire a plus a verb in the infinitive form. Take note that the two previous verbs had this formula. Potere plus a verb in the infinitive form. Sapere plus a verb in the infinitive form. Potere and sapere do not have a preposition afterwards. Riuscire will be riuscire plus a plus a verb in the infinitive form. Riuscire a describes the mental and physical ability of doing something. For example, if I say non riesco a venire alla festa perché sono troppo stanca. So I can't come to the party because physically I'm just too tired. Okay? So you're not coming, not because you're sick, but because mentally you just cannot make it. Let's look at some examples that will make this more clear. Non sono riuscita a vedere il film. Mi sono addormentata sul divano. <laughs> this is a sentence perfect for me. So I'm saying I was not able to watch the movie because I fell asleep on the couch. Hands up if it happens to you. <laughs> so in this case, physically, I was not able to watch it because I was so tired I just fell asleep. Let's look at some more examples. Non riesco a camminare perché mi fa male il piede. I can't walk. I'm not able to walk because my foot hurts. So physically, there is something that's not letting you do something. And in this case, it's your foot that hurts. Let's look at another one. Non riesco a capire qual è il problema. I am not able to understand what the problem is. In this case, the ability is linked to something mental. So you're not able to understand, okay? It could be a figurative or a real meaning towards this sentence. Last example. Sono riuscita a superare le mie paure e ho accarezzato un cane. Hmm. In this case, you're saying I was able to fight my fears and I was able to pet a dog. Now, luckily, I don't have that fear because I would cuddle dogs all day long if I could. But I know sometimes people have fear of animals. So you're linking it to something that is in the, let's say, like in the mental field, in the mental sphere of things. Okay. All right. I hope this lesson was uh, helpful for you and that it cleared up how to use these three verbs. I suggest that you write a couple of sentences. For example, can you play an instrument? Write it in the comments. Tell me something using those three verbs and show me that you really truly understood how to differentiate them and use them correctly. I'm here to help you. So if you write a sentence that's not right, I will correct it for you. 
I want you to succeed in your language journey. If you need anything, write a comment or get in touch with me at julia at italianlanguagehub.com. Un bacione!